Man, how do I even start this video? I mean, it's always a thrill when a new region gets released, but damn, we've been waiting for this for three years, and it's by far the region we knew the absolute least about up to this point. And it's also based on France. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try to calm down here, and let's, let's think of something. <clears throat> Hi. Ah! Holy shit! Fontaine is here, in all its Fontaine's watery glory. Pardon my uncontained excitement as I power wash through this video, but you gotta admit that any other person who's been playing this game for as long as I have must have had the same reaction. And since I didn't manage to put out a summary video in time last year due to certain unforeseen circumstances, consider this video to be a similar reaction to what happened at that time. Fontaine is here to kick ass and step up in majorly every significant way possible. Or at least that's what I want to see in the upcoming updates, but goddamn, you can call me excited from head to toe. For the first time in a while, I felt genuine excitement for a new version of the game. Which, you know, makes sense. I don't think Mihoyo really expects anyone to go head over heels every time a new version releases. Yeah, they're polished for sure and they add cool things, but they know they won't keep the old players coming back forever without the yearly region expansion slash for Tui banner, and so here we are again. I already did a considerable amount of things in the 4 days I played a 4.0 so far, I finished exploring a major part of Fontaine, Acts 1 and 2 of the new Arkham quest, and also the Nace story quest, but since I want to focus solely on Fontaine as a region for this video, I'll just lightly skim over those as we go and save the in-depth story explanation for my future Genshin Impact retrospective I plan to tackle at some point. And so yes, this video is spoiler free, at least for the important story segments, I'll show gameplay, characters, locations and the such as you do, but nothing too major, you should really check out the story for yourself anyway. And trust me when I say I didn't blaze through all of this like some of you crazy motherfuckers do whenever a new region releases. I took my sweet time. All of my recorded footage totals up to 16 hours of gameplay. That's more than I've played over the last two months alone. I was enthralled from beginning to end. So compliments aside, what's new in this godforsaken game? Oh, we got Fontaine. That's nice. Coming into this, Fontaine was the region we knew about the very least in the chronological sense. And Azuma had Ayaka as a playable character in the beta, Sino and Kali played major roles in the prologue manga, but Fontaine has just been sitting there for three years, waiting for someone to cross the border from Liwa. Well, actually, I say that, but the way we get to Fontaine is pretty surprising, in my opinion. Back in 3.6, when the Girl of the Sands was released to the north of Sumeru's desert, I didn't really bat much of an eye to all the water surrounding it. I thought it was nice to know the desert wasn't infinite and indeed had a border, sure, but I also didn't expect it to be the way we enter Fontaine. Fontaine, mostly because I don't have a brain. Genshin Impact's map has had some modities in the past, Dragon Spine used to be a gaping hole, then Inazuma comes around and protrudes itself into the sea, and now Fontaine is like a massive dong hanging out of Sumeru. Fontaine is Teyvat's penis. Not that it matters that much anyway, although I was expecting for Fontaine to be accessed continentally like Sumeru, I can see that wouldn't work here given the way they introduced the nation in-game, so they want to save for a little later on, I suppose. Fontaine starts pretty much like Sumeru did, which is walking like it's no one's business and get greeted by the locals. Was this always here? I swear to god this wasn't here before. No, it really wasn't. I suppose they put this here so new players can come straight from the desert to Fontaine, but if that's the case, why not edit it back in 3.6? Maybe so we can be a little more in the dark as to where 4.0 is headed, but hell, it was an inconvenience and I have to trek back here before moving on because my stupid ADHD brain keeps telling me things. Also, I apologize in advance, but my graphics card just decided to not capture audio when recording, thanks Radeon, so in some scenes it would work better if I had the in-game dialogue, I just can't, you know, use it. After meeting Linnea and Lynette, we're free to wander around, making it the first time that a character from the Travail trailer is the one we properly meet in their respective nation. Monsat was Amber, although Venti acknowledges our presence, Lewa was Artaglia even though we see Ningwon and Ashen, Inazuma was Thoma and it takes a while until we properly meet Ayaka, and Sumeru was Kali, Sino taking a considerably long time to be seen. Pretty interesting choice to have the two oldest and most known Fontaine characters to be the ones we meet. Also fun to have another resident twink as our first 5 star character banner, some things just never change. There's a few other new characters which were all introduced before, forming the most nightmarish blunt rotation in the nation. I didn't know any of that though, I kept myself away from spoilers and leaks as much as I could and it damn well paid off. I had no expectations of what characters to look forward to before coming in and I was pleasantly surprised. Hell, I didn't even know how they were going to implement Linnea and Lynette into a banner, but sure enough, they did it in classic Mihoyo fashion by downgrading 1 to 4 star status, although I don't really know what I expected, so... Yeah, who cares, you get a Lynette for free anyway, it's not the end of the world. Lynette and Lynette both act exactly like I expected them to. Lynette talks, Lynette listens, and they both walk side to side all the time. Nothing too surprising. They have an adoptive brother called Fremine, who appears to have the bell as a signature weapon, so that's neat. Maybe Mihoyo finally watched my video about the bell. The other three, Navia, Nouvelle, and Clohan, all get respectable amounts of screen time impacting the story in one way or another, and honestly, I also really, really like Furina. I've seen people call her annoying and... 
What? What are you talking about? She differentiates herself from the other four archons in the game by just being a complete self-centered, extra confident, literal celebrity who's shown to be a master of deception and easy to anger when things don't go her way, reminding me a lot of young kings who ascended after their parents died, which makes him believe there's some sort of pain or regret behind the front she puts her people. She's just a complete goof, her personality is ridiculous and unpredictable, and not only did the people of Fontaine revere her, they actively cheer her on like a fucking South American 14 year old seeing a K-pop singer. And in a world where Archons were apathetic and sadistic, hidden by their people or just straight up missing, it's so cool to see how she walks in the city and people recognize her as the Archon. She even acknowledges that there are poor people in her country, the fucking bastard. She really is just a French king. Do you think she beheaded someone at some point? So far, Furina has become my second favorite Archon in the story, and hopefully it remains that way. Although, if I may add, she's missing that typical noble woman laugh at the end of every sentence. You know, oh, 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 I'm gonna stop myself there, it's probably not funny. Speaking of unique things, I love how Fontaine is built completely on top of this... I don't know exactly what it's called, this elevated piece of land here, and then to connect to the rest of the world it has this elevator, which we in Brazil actually have a pretty similar one. <laughs> okay, it's not similar at all, this worked way better in my head. The Wave Rider feels pretty fucking important next to these massive ships. Can I have a yacht or something? Pretty sure I can afford it. One elevator trip later and we unlock our first Fontanian statue of the Seven, and I might as well address the massive manatee shaped blob of water in the room because I need to. Before 4.0, I wanted to make a video going over my Fontaine wishlist, but then I figured that eh, I haven't been looking at leaks anyway, maybe whatever I say has already been leaked to either be or not be featured and the people wouldn't trust me when I say I haven't gone to our slash Genshin Impact lease if I ended up getting something right. But trust me when I say, one of the main things I wanted going into Fontaine was diving, or at least give water more meaning. Genshin Impact has always had these beautiful seas and lakes and rivers, the water is almost always one of the highlights of any given scenery, and plus we're going to the nation of of Hydro itself, it just made sense. Uh, however, I didn't exactly get my hopes up too much because that's something I just don't do with video games anymore. See, for example, however fucking many broken unfinished games we had these past couple of years, if they came out at all. That said, hot damn was a surprise. When I first looked at Fontaine, my first instinct was to compare it to Sumeru, as you do, and yeah, it's a bit smaller on the surface. Not that I was too disappointed, or disappointed at all, because clearly it's still supposed to expand towards these unexplored landmarks here and how places like Chenyu Vale and Chiang Village have yet to be visited, like Sumer did with the desert last year, but upon unlocking my first statue of the Seven, every preconceived notion I had about Fontaine's initial area was immediately thrown away. Holy crap, they did it. The Traveler can hold their breath now. Well, at least in Fontaine, that is. You can only dive while in there because it's a blessing of the nation. Uh, conceptually, it makes sense, they wanted to focus that on the new nation, but can you imagine what diving in previous areas could be like? What if, and just what if, we got an item after finishing the story for Fontaine which allowed us to dive in other places, kind of like getting an HM in Pokemon and going back to a starter area, or getting a wall jump in a Metroidvania. That would, of course, take more effort into implementing whole new underwater areas, but this is Mihoyo we're talking about, developing pretty and complex sceneries is their A game, and besides a man can dream alright, let me be. Underwater Fontaine is amazing, the vistas are serene and calming, the music is amazing, and it controls way better than I expected. You have one button to dive straight down and one to resurface, but just tilting both analog sticks in the direction you want to go does the job greatly. I was pleasantly surprised with how easy it is to swim up and down, left and right. This is by far the coolest addition to the game ever since... Well, I don't know. Sure, it's not a unique concept against Genshin Impact, but do I care? Should I care? Because I don't. I'm just here to play fun games and have fun playing fun games. I really don't care if a game copies or takes heavy inspiration from another place. As long as it's fun, I'm down for both experiences. It makes me happy to be easygoing and able to entertain myself with the game where other people can't because they see one too many similarities and give up on playing almost immediately. Not saying that's an inherently bad thing, after all, originality will always be important, but goddamn, just because some other game has swimming infinitely underwater doesn't mean others shouldn't, we've been over that shit countless times. Now, with that out of the way, HOLY SHIT THIS IS SUCH A BREATH OF FRESH AIR! Ironic, considering we are underwater. Just take a look at all of this! It's vast, ample, beautiful, rich, and you can go through the rings like in Superman 64, you can swim through all the rings! I don't like the combat. Yeah. It's the weakest point in my opinion, and don't get me wrong, I certainly don't expect them to integrate every skill and burst into an underwater setting, that's not what I'm trying to say, but it feels basic since there's no element usage here. Where it shines, however, is in the puzzle solving, as you need to find a specific water mimic that'll give you the specific skill to progress in a specific area or complete a specific trial. I love the animals though, like look at this dude. 
He's just fat. In fact, I love basically everything else. I love the sound design, the art design, just the feeling of being underwater, how they play around with the idea of submerged everyday stuff. Kind of like submechanophobia without the phobia part. The ruins of previous civilizations beneath the ocean, signaling how the water in Fontaine is ever constantly rising. How can it possibly get any better? Well, with the main city, of course! Kind of weird I mentioned the main city after talking about all the water surrounding it. This game's architectural design just keeps getting better by the moment. And yeah, I know I said the same thing back in Sumeru, not that anyone got to hear that because I didn't make a video on it, but I'm gonna say it again. This is, so far, the best main city in the game. It's a feast to your eyes, it's tall, aggressive, easy to get lost in, intricate, all the good adjectives you can think of. They're present here. Apart from accessible, if you become wheelchair bound, good fucking luck, buddy. Fontaine is divided between three distinct regions, each housing their important areas and sub areas Bello region, Beryl region, and the court of Fontaine. And hey, look, I tried pronouncing a few of these names, but I can't. I, I just fucking can't. I'm a failure in every possible way. Being honest, I came in fully expecting Fontaine to be the most advanced region as of yet in almost every way, but I wasn't expecting this much. Furries! Fucking furries! Furries on boats! The melusines, as they refer to. They are so fucking adorable, it makes me want to squish one whenever I see it. Much like humans, they fill a variety of roles around the nation, even having their own little village, but what caught my attention the most is their presence in the aqua boats. The waterways connecting the major areas of Fontaine are a neat little touch, symbolizing all the advanced, expensive technology the region builds itself upon. From a practical level, they're entirely necessary the moment you open up every teleport waypoint in Statue of the Seven, but they're just serene and calming to be in, and each of them is accompanied by one melusine providing commentary on the local scenery as if we were the tourists, which we are. It just makes me excited to like this game and be able to appreciate this. It becomes completely unnecessary pretty quickly, but I'll do it again and again just for the experience. And they don't give a shit about your damn security either. Not only are the elevator is completely open, you can jump out of the aquabus and it'll just go on until it is no more. The Lock Folk are back too, well, not physically, because they all left Fontaine before freeing the beginning of the Archon, but Fontaine is still their homeland, and so they play a decent part in the stories the nation has to offer. And while we're on that topic, let me tell you, get ready for world quests. A lot of world quests. Remember the Aranaka quests in Sumeru you got at the very beginning? I do, because I haven't finished it yet. Well, it's not quite the same here, but the sheer amount of world quests I was presented with while exploring is quite a lot. And not like I finished any of them as of now, so I can't definitely see if they're bad or take too long. But in numbers, it's a lot. Again, not a bad thing, just worth pointing out. It's also, once again, how you unlock the nation rep system, this time being tied to the Steambird, which had been teased a few times in the past. I haven't unlocked anything as of yet, but these rewards seem great, like Crystal Flycatcher signing the fuck up, man. The human NPCs are a highlight too, and of course very distinct from the previous nations. We had some interactions with a few Fontaine NPCs in the past, and here it's basically a reflection of that scale to the size of an actual country. I love how everyone and everything is so comically self-centered, this path is a satire of Eurocentrism. You might think I'm exaggerating, but Mihoyo hasn't really shown to be the sort of people to add details without purpose. And besides, it's just really fucking apparent. Fontaine is literally the most elevated nation on the continent, said to be located smack dab in the middle of Teyvat, housing what is likely a lake right beneath Celestia, all waters flow out of it into the other countries, and they openly boast about being more advanced in technology than any other nation. The uniforms the workers use, the extravagant clothes everyone else uses, their jobs, how they trim their dogs, the interiors and exteriors of buildings, it's not the prettiest nation in Teva because that's just subjective, but it's certainly the nation with the biggest emphasis on looks and first impressions, making it their very defining trait to be chic. The streets are filled with supposedly expensive stories you can't actually buy anything in. There's this very intentional, artificial, and almost annoying symmetry to absolutely everything. The terrestrial flora is composed of nothing but colorful flowers, and it's all so tonally light, as if everything is made of the same expensive white marble or some other stone, I, I don't know stone prices. And of course, being the nation of technological advances, everything, including the fish, is in some way mechanical. The enemies, the guards, the puzzles, the fauna, the fucking artifacts, if it's humanoid or just generally moving, it most likely has a cog somewhere in the middle. However, this all comes at a hefty price. Despite the expensive nature of the place, the nation is believed to be on the edge of a massive catastrophe. Their main energy source is said to be on the verge of declining. Despite the clear weather, it's said that breathing in the city is just like inhaling toxic fumes. And even with all the water there, it's by far the main city with the least amount of connection to nature. And as if it weren't all enough, Fontaine's citizens are constantly anxious or nervous, believing that some sort of judgement might come sooner or later. Surface level Fontaine is incredibly pre, but of course something that seems so awfully artificial and perfect must have some secrets lying beneath itself. 
These are things that more or less unravel during the story and set up the plot for Fontaine going forward. Did that crap just drown a kid's pool? Continuing to jump from point to point like the mad lad I am, Genshin Impact has always had good music. It's the only aspect of the game I think it's pretty much perfect and they fucking nailed it once again. Fontaine opts for stringed instruments like Egg Nation with a heavy emphasis on violin, flutes, pipe organs, and water cups. Yeah, they got a whole ass orchestra together to compose the music again. I'm just... I appreciate the dedication. I don't have anything else to say about it, just listen to it. If there's ever a day when this game updates and has a bad song, I'm deleting this channel. The music was once again conducted by Rob Ziegler, who I mistook for Rob Zimmerman, before reminding myself that that is Bob Dylan's birth name. Not sure why I mentioned that, but hey, good job to the London Symphony Orchestra. They were the same people behind the Sumero ST from last year, alongside a bunch of other orchestras. When checking this video, I went on a spree of Genshin Impact Live Symphonies, and man, these really are something else. Check them out when you have the chance if you haven't already. This is the surface stuff though, literally track that plays when you're on land, but as soon as you dive underwater, the experience becomes ethereal. It's an out-of-body sensation to just sit there and let your ears take in the majestic sounds that I'm pretty sure were conceived by angels roaming on Earth. I'm not sure in how many ways I can complement this game's sounds, but I'm gonna keep doing it until the day I grow bored of it. I guess I should also talk about the two, maybe three if you kind of that way, new bosses. One is a fire crab thing in a cave underwater, and the other, the superior one, is the ice swing suit, composed of two mechanical beings, Coppelia and Coppelius. The first boss is... eh? But this second boss is interesting, because you can talk to a guy filming the damn thing to choose what version of the boss you want to fight, and in turn, earn different rewards, one focusing on cryo and the other on animal. It's a pretty neat idea which plays into Fontaine's mechanical shtick, I like it. Just a quick fire round of other less traditions that I really liked. Uh, the regional specialties are good, the real life food references are quirky, you can buy lasagne. I enjoyed the flying boat that leads to a few hydroculi. Eat your heart out, Dumon. I like how this guy got shot down by this girl. Bro has no riz. I thoroughly enjoyed the steampunk aspects in a few areas, like the one directly under Fontaine and the Poisson region. In fact, I love most sub areas Poisson, the Merci village, the Institute of Natural Philosophy, just to name a few. And I like the small automation aspects in the nation, like the blacksmith not ever using an anvil and relying on that big old machine behind her, or the patrolling robotic guards, it just makes the place feel that little bit more alive. And with that, I think I pretty much covered the bulk of the experiences I wanted to share. Uh, now, I could go over other 4.0 additions like the new battle pass weapons I'm never gonna get, the cool new party screen, that was nice to see, or the new TCG character cards. But I'll leave it at just Fontaine and do a proper version review whenever not long comes around. It just, you know, full package with every version, as you do. All that goes on, I'm gonna be on the edge of my seat, waiting for the 4.1 patch and whatever new things may come with it. Arlequino can't come soon enough. Ar Arlequino's the next one, right? Right? I, I hope so. Thanks for watching and have fun exploring Fontaine. God knows I am.